Coming up on this week's Gadget Show Web TV, John's testing the latest in focus projector. I've got this week's best tech news and head off to see some of Sony's latest tech. Hello and welcome to this week's Web TV. Now I hope you've enjoyed the company of the lovely Pollyanna over the last two months whilst I took a bit of a break for some well-deserved R&R. But now I'm back and as ever I'm here to bring you the best news and features from the world of tech. And to start as I mean to go on, I headed to London to check out some of Sony's best upcoming products. But first up, John's also invaded the studio to check out the latest projector from InFocus. Now InFocus have built up a reputation for making some great quality projectors, so John was keen to check that they hadn't let their reputation slide. <laughs> We used to hear quite a lot about in-focus projectors, but we haven't heard much from them recently. However, now they're back with this new in-focus 8600 series. This is the 8602. Quite a brutalist looking thing by the standards of their old projectors. Um, very chunky styling, although uh, you can uh, mitigate that with uh, various optional covers. For example, that can be replaced with this white panel or indeed a black gloss panel. I gather there are even wood effect panels available. And you also get a completely matching remote which shares the same styling cues. Not quite sure about this uh, blue ring around the lens though. That seems a very pointless bit of decoration. At least you can turn it off. Picture quality though is every bit as good as you'd expect from an in-focus. The motion is dealt with very well, colours are bright but realistic and there's none of that sort of uh, rainbow effects or shimmering that you sometimes get with uh, DLP projectors. It's all very well managed. You also get very detailed menus for calibrating and setting up the projector with individual gain adjustment for red, green and blue for example. Though I was slightly disappointed not to find a stretch option in the aspect ratio so that I could stretch a 4x3 to 16x9. I had to do that on the player. Um, the projector is also just a tad noisy by modern standards I think and I was disappointed to see only two HDMI sockets rather than three. I think you need those these days. And you don't get much confidence from the actual quality of the remote or indeed the controls on the projector itself. In particular the two knobs to control vertical and horizontal shift have a very imprecise feel. So overall although the InFocus still offers that excellent picture quality I think some of its more mainstream rivals the likes of Panasonic and Epson offer the same picture quality whilst at the same time much more convenience and a better user experience. Right, news time now and first up Kodak have announced the Playtouch video camera. It's a pocket camcorder with 1080p video recording and a 3 inch capacitive touch screen. Now unlike the Kodak PlaySport we recently reviewed on web TV, the Playtouch offers on camera editing and an easy share option as well as an LCD glare shield and an external microphone jack for higher quality audio recording. Now there's no word yet on when it will be released in the UK however the Playtouch is due to ship in the US towards the end of the year and should cost around $230, which will hopefully mean the Playtouch will hit UK stores before Christmas and cost around 150 quid. Next up, Polaroid have decided to make their very own 3D glasses, as they found that most people don't like wearing the cheap 3D specs given out at the cinema. Polaroid hope to rectify this by launching their new premium 3D specs later this month in partnership with Real ID. And I have to say, the new curved style lenses are a lot more attractive and stylish than the standard specs you pick up at the cinema. But the real potential with these glasses is that Polaroid also plans to offer prescription lens wearers a range of premium 3D style covers that will attach to any pair of glasses for a more comfortable wear. The current plan is to distribute the Polaroid 3D glasses line to opticians, cinemas and retailers. Now, I know that it's only just the end of August, but that Christmas shopping season is fast approaching, with more and more companies getting their products geared up for the holiday season. And there's no better example of this than Sony, with their new ranges of cameras, camcorders, TVs and MP3 players to name just a few. They've got more than enough to keep the most tech-hungry amongst us happy. So when they offered me the chance to have a day out of the office to see it all, I kindly said, well, go on then. I'm here in London at a Sony event where they're showcasing their hottest new products ranging from their 3D TVs to their latest iPod docks. Let's go and check them out. This is 
Sony's latest handy cam, the NEX BG10E. Now we all know that Sony caters for both the professional and amateur market, but are hoping to bridge the gap with this particular model. Now it comes with a very nice lens, as you can see here, and it's compatible with various E and A mount lenses. And if you're used to shooting video on your DSLR camera, you might notice that the audio isn't always up to scratch. Well, this model comes with a high quality multi-directional microphone so you can get great quality sound. It also comes with a different microphone input and you can add an external microphone. It records directly to SD and it shoots full 1080p HD footage. It also takes 14.2 megapixel stills. The price is still to be confirmed, but it's expected in stores at the end of September. This is the latest Sony Bio P series. And as you can see, it's available in various bright colors. But this particular model was built with complete portability in mind and has 3G built into the design itself. It also has a GPS and digital compass built in. And one of my favorite features is the touch sensitive mouse in the corner of the screen. Sony's latest iPod dock is the XATIP, and what's truly brilliant about this device is it's fully portable, allowing you to use it anywhere in the house, the living room, the kitchen, or maybe even the garden. It's got seven hours worth of battery after just one charge, so if you are using it when you're out and about, it's not going to die out on you. It's got an OLED display, and you can choose from five different EQ settings. Now, if it's more classic Walkman that takes your fancy, then it's the A series that you need to check out. It's super sleek and stylish, and it comes with a 2.8 inch OLED screen. You can just see the colors are really crisp and vibrant. It's got 29 hours worth of extensive playback, so the battery's not going to run out if you're using it whilst you're out and about. And it's compatible with both iTunes and BBC iPlayer. So if you're on the bus or the train, you can catch up on your favorite shows. We all know that 3D is a big thing in filmmaking right now, and if you were one of the lucky ones, you managed to catch the World Cup in 3D too. But if you ever really wondered about how 3D footage is made, I thought I'd give you a little bit of an insight. Now this is Sony's 3D setup. They've got two cameras shooting through what they call a beam split mirror. Now shooting at this angle means that they can get cameras closer together. And if I stand in front of the cameras here, you can see that I'm being displayed on this 3D TV. Just get my glasses out. Now the process that happens is the footage from the cameras gets sent to this 3D processor and any errors are corrected or removed and then the footage is sent directly to this 3D TV. And I can tell you, it looks amazing. So I've had an insight to the tech Sony is going to be releasing over the next couple of months, so make sure you keep your eyes out too. But in the meantime, I'm going to enjoy my goodie bag. Well, that's all we've got time for today, but I'll be back next week with more features and reviews. And if you haven't already seen it, make sure you check out our coverage from last week's Gamescom, so we get some first look at some of the biggest and best upcoming games titles. And don't forget that the main show is on your screens Monday nights at 8 on 5. And this week, Susie Notice joined forces as they transform a quiet seaside B&B into a high-tech automated hotel packed full of gadgets to fill your every need. Jason hits the streets to select his top five games to play on the go. Yes! And John and Pollyanna go head to head in the challenge to find the best one touch camcorder. And as if that wasn't enough, Otis slips on his speedos as he checks out the power ski jet board. It's one not to miss. But from me and Web TV, it's bye for now.